All right, guys and girls, um, it's Dr. Marcy, and I just want to talk to you about the common sense of hormone replacement therapy. Number one, let's talk about the fact that there's a lot of information out there that's bad information that says that hormone replacement therapy is going to cause you a heart attack. Not true. Number two, um, understanding how the hormone pathways work is imperative to getting this right. And so many are getting this wrong. And here's why. When we look at what needs to happen, we need vitamin B5 to acetyl-CoA to cholesterol. Notice here that cholesterol is necessary for hormone production. So then we go to pregnenolone which if all of it goes to progesterone, we end up with just cortisol and aldosterone. These, that pathway, you need some cortisol to survive. So people are going to tell you that cortisol is bad. Cortisol is not bad when it is happening in the right way. So what should happen is as you wake up, there's a spike in your cortisol. It slowly decreases throughout the day, unless something happens and you need a little boost, like um, you are getting chased by someone or you have an athletic performance and you need a little kind of boost of epinephrine because cortisol help release epinephrine, um, those kinds of things. So other than that, though, we want your cortisol to just decrease throughout the day so that melatonin can gradually increase so that you can sleep at night. Make sense? You need some cortisol. It's the overproduction or underproduction of cortisol that become a problem. So after it goes to pregnenolone and goes down a steroid pathway, we need it to go to DHEA. DHEA sulfate can then um, go into testosterone. Testosterone can get, and DHEA sulfate can get converted into estrogen, a type of estrogen. So here's the parts that get wrong. Number one, as testosterone is given, they don't test DHEA or DHEA sulfate. And so we have no idea what that number is. Number two is there is no repeat testing done on cholesterol. And if they've put you on other medications to lower your cholesterol, it's going to be harder and harder for you to produce testosterone, making you more dependent on this hormone replacement therapy that you may or may not need. So what can we do in these steps instead of just jumping to testosterone? Well, we should do a 24 hour cortisol because we should know what's happening with that cortisol curve. We should do a total cortisol because we should know how much cortisol is being produced throughout the day and if it is too much. If it's too much, we know we're not going down a testosterone pathway. So then we need to talk about what else is going on. Some of that can be found in the blood work. So I had a male client come in this week. He, for the last four years, has been showing up with this like low-grade bacterial fungal infection type thing in his blood work, in his white blood cells. And no one has addressed it. They also haven't taken a cholesterol number on this guy in five years. And he's been on HRT for at least that long. We can also see that over that five-year period, his hematocrit has become off. Um, red blood cells are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And his hemoglobin count is too high. So why when they know that this has been off, particularly for the last three years, have they not done a cholesterol to check this guy's risk of heart disease and stroke? I have no idea. But that, again, is something that you need to make sure that they are doing at least twice a year um, if you're on HRT, but no less than once a year should be done. He's never had his cortisol level checked. He has a typical, what we call cortisol body type, where he's gaining weight right above his hip bones, not throughout the rib cage area, but right above his hip bones. So we know that insulin resistance is also developing because that happens when cortisol stays too high for too long. So 
we've got this guy who's got an amazing backside, great legs, super strong in the gym in his legs, but he's got this like spare tire. Literally, it looks like he's wearing one of those inner tubes um, that you float with in the pool kind of thing that you have your kids float with in the pool um, right above his hips. We know all of that is insulin resistance building. We know all of that is due to excess cortisol production for too long. So obviously he can't produce testosterone on his own. But no one's looked at this. They also haven't tested his DHEA. So we have no idea what that's doing. But when he originally went on testosterone replacement therapy um, five years ago, his DHEA was low. They also checked his thyroid and his thyroid was low. They have not rechecked his thyroid since. Now, oh, I'm sorry, they did six months later. Um, And they have not checked his vitamin D in the last two years. You also need vitamin D to produce these hormones. So how would they make this right for this guy? Because he's still having symptoms, right? Well, number one, we have to find a way, obviously, to get this cortisol picture managed. Number two, we need to know what he's doing in terms of DHEA production. But here's the part that's going to shock you as a guy. Number three, they have asked him to take a supplement. They're not having him take um, an aromatase inhibitor yet, but they've asked him to take a supplement that lowers his estrogen. And what I'll tell you is that most of the guys that I see that are doing really well on testosterone replacement, because you do need estrogen, It's not testosterone is a male hormone and estrogen is a female hormone. Both happen in both bodies. They just happen at different amounts. And what I see for most guys is that they feel best with their estrogen somewhere, this estradiol number, somewhere between 26 and 29. Sometimes you'll get a guy who feels better right around 30. But 26 to 29 is kind of that sweet spot. He's at 22. And his free testosterone is at 33. So he should feel great. He should be able to manage his weight easy. He should be able to build strength in the gym. Um, And he should be able to sleep through the night. He's not sleeping through the night. He's got this spare tire. And he uh, is really struggling to feel healthy. If we knew what his DHEA was, it's possible that we could support here and make it so that the testosterone that he's taking is less because this testosterone that he's taking artificially is driving his entire red blood cell count hematocrit hemoglobin count up and so now he has to donate blood every two weeks which is not a bad thing but it's also not convenient for his life There's only one center around him that actually does blood donations. They only do it on Tuesdays in certain hours. Those happen to be the hours that he is mentoring young engineers. It's not convenient. Number two, they've never tested pregnenolone or progesterone in this guy. So again, we have no idea if he's tending towards a testosterone pathway or tending towards a cortisol pathway. And then number three, We don't know what his cholesterol is. So his hematocrit, hemoglobin, red blood cell count are all up. We don't know what his cholesterol is, but we know that those together could be dangerous. Number two, they've driven his estrogen too low. They don't know what his DHEA is. And they aren't supporting what his symptoms are. They're just saying, you're fine. You're within range. He's obviously not fine. Number three, they've never tested progesterone. They've never tested his cortisol. So if we have a symptomatic male who's doing hormone replacement and still not getting the results that they want, there are other places to test. We also should be looking at his thyroid based on where his weight gain is because his thyroid is directly connected to how well those adrenal glands are functioning. Um, And if he can't get a handle on this, his thyroid is going to go crazy. And in his family, there is a history of thyroid dysfunction and his sister even has an autoimmune thyroid disorder. 
So we need to get this under control and be more aware of what's actually happening in his body. If you're someone who's been doing hormone replacement therapy and you're still struggling with things like weight gain around your waist, um, erectile dysfunction, having to get up multiple times in the night to go to the bathroom, um, and you're still not losing weight as easily as you believe you should or not performing the way that you should, then we should have a conversation about how to more optimize this picture for you. Let me know.